Hey everybody, today on Rado we're running through arcs, but before I begin, please turn subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goofs, you know what they are. Now, I hope I don't make any rules goofs, because on top of playing this today, I also have a tutorial video for arcs on my channel, RTFM, so please check that out if you want to learn how to play. There's a link in the description below. And again, I don't think I'm going to get anything wrong, but it's still important to have those Klingon subtitles on, because anytime you play a game, sometimes you mess up. Anyway, so let's talk about arcs. Arcs is set in space, as you can clearly see. Uh, now, this, if you don't know anything about it, is a new game by Cole Worley, later games, makes games like Root and Oath and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, it's also Kyle Farron R2, for my money, is, I, I think, I'm pretty solid in saying that I think Kyle Farron is my favorite artist in board games. I just love how much character uh, the cards have, but that's not the gameplay of the game. That's probably what, uh, which is probably what you want to see. So I want to talk about arcs. Let's start, and let's start playing it. Uh, we've got two different factions. I am playing with the leaders and lore module that's included in the base game. Basically just means I've got some slightly different factions uh, at work. So on the left brain, uh, I've got my upstart, um, who's really good at declaring ambitions, which is sort of choosing the scoring criteria for the round. And then I've got the elder, who is difficult to attack or gains a benefit when attacked. Uh, and then we've got some uh, lore cards as well, some extra little abilities, ancient holdings, an extra spot for resources, galactic rifles, I can shoot from farther away. This game, if you don't know about it, is a space strategy game, but it is also kind of a trick-taking game. And the way that that works is each of us has a hand of cards. These cards have different numbers and suits. The suits determine which actions they allow you to take. The numbers uh, tell you sort of how many of those actions are available, and uh, also what type of ambition you can declare. Um, so six can declare the empath ambition, which is weird because it's aggression, but that's okay. Um, and that is sort of determining how you're going to score for the round. Uh, the first player is going to lead uh, the trick or the, the play um, with one of these cards. And then the others can choose to follow suit or not. Now, left player has the initiative. That's what this like, token's about. So I get to choose which card I'm going to play first. And I think I want to start off strong by declaring an ambition. And the reason I want to do that is because as the upstart, whenever I declare an ambition, I can gain a resource. So I want to declare empath because I already start with a psionic uh, resource token and the empath ambition is all about having the most psionic resources. So I'm going to play aggression into the lead spot here. And when I do that, I uh, because there are two pips on the aggression card, I get to take two aggression actions. The aggression actions are battle, move, or secure. Moving and battling are, are probably have an idea of what that means. Securing is how I gain court cards. These uh, guild and vox cards that are on the side, these are ongoing abilities or immediate one-time effects, but you can't get them until you've influenced them by sending little agents to those cards. And I haven't done that yet. So all I'm going to be able to do here is battle or move. But before I do that, I am choosing to declare an ambition. So I take this ambition declared thing, place it on top. That just shows that uh, this is going to be really easy to surpass. I'll talk about that in a second. And then I'm going to choose one of these ambitions to declare. Actually, I'm not choosing. I have to declare empath because it's the number six and I played a six. So I take the highest value score token, I place it on empath, and there we go. Oh, you know what? There's one thing I have forgotten to do, which is a two-player thing, which is that uh, you might be able to tell that there are these black tokens along the top two uh, clusters on the board. These are not in the game. They, For all intents and purposes, they don't exist. And in a two-player game, something that you do is you take uh, resource tokens that correspond to all of the different uh, planets, because each planet corresponds to a resource token, and you uh, take, take those resources and place them next to the ambitions, which is sort of like an NPC trying to score those, which means it's going to be pretty difficult to score Tycoon because four resources are up there already, um, or at least to win it. Um, but that's okay. I'm going for empath. And yes, 
the the non-existent NPC player is uh, has one of those tokens already, but I start with one and I control an empath planet here, a psionic planet. So I think I'll be able to produce more resources than my opponent. So I have declared the empath ambition and my upstart here has the special abilities. When I declare an ambition, I can gain any resource. Might as well gain a psionic. But I also kind of want to use the psionic resource because these resources give you extra abilities during what's called the prelude. The prelude is after I've played a card, but before I've taken the actions on the card, I can spend these resources to take extra actions. And the psionic resource specifically lets me take any actions that are on the lead card. So battling, moving, or securing. I want to be aggressive. I played the aggression card. Aggression is what I'm going for. So I'm going to, ooh, I could be aggressive, but I could also do a little bit of moving and building because I also want to make sure I can secure some spaces on the board. So I'm just going to take one ship and I'm going to move it. Moving is one of the actions on aggression. So I have spent my psionic to move just one ship here. And then I'm going to spend this material, this little cube here for a build action. Materials let you build or repair. And a thing that I want to build is another city. Uh, because I have a friendly unit in this place, I can build a, a thing there. So I've built a city. This will allow me to gain fuel because the fuel planet, fuel will help me move. Um, and it will also opens up a space for me to put more resources. So I've done all that. Now I'm taking the actual actions, battling, moving, or in, uh, securing. I'm going to battle. I'm gonna battle, there are a couple ways that I could battle. Normally, you have to move into an enemy's space, but because I have these galactic rifles, I can use these blue dice attacking an adjacent space. The blue dice are not that impressive. They have a lot of blank sides to them, but they also have no way to hurt me in the process. So I feel pretty safe uh, using them. I do kind of like the idea of getting rid of these white ships that are kind of in my business over here. I could also try and take out these guys. I think I want to go here though, because I've got four ships here, which means I collect four dice. So I'm using my galactic rifle so I can attack from an adjacent place. And I'm going to uh, go after these two ships here. Uh, so I got two hits. Now, in combat, in arcs, the attacker does all the work. The defender just uh, lies, lies there and sees what happens. So with my two hits, I can apply them one on each ship, in which case they will both be knocked over, they're damaged, whereas before they were fresh. Or I can put both of the hits on one ship. Each ship has basically two hit points. If I were to take this, I would take it as a trophy, and that is good, but the elder over here has their own ability, which is when they defend in battle, uh, if the attacker takes any trophies, they get to influence, which is putting those agents on the cards. And I don't necessarily want them to have that. So I'm gonna spread the damage out like that. So that was one attack that I've done. I have another attack or move that I can do. I think I'm gonna do another attack from here to here. With just, I only have two ships here, so I'm only rolling two dice. Uh, and so it's one damage. That's fine. They also have a building here, but I wouldn't be able to attack the building until I destroyed all of the ships. So that is my turn. I've taken my two actions that I got from the aggression. I took all those prelude actions a while ago. That is where I am. And now we go over to right brain. Now I have some different cards. One, I have my own aggression card. And because they declared ambition, the value of their card is a zero. So this two will surpass it. That's important because if you surpass, you get to use all of the pips on your card. Whereas if I wanted to do a different action card, so for example, if I want to do an administration instead, which gives me a different uh, array of actions, I will only get one action of this type. Doesn't matter how many pips are on this card, I'll only get the one. So, do I want to be aggressive? I think I probably do. I mean, they have swung in pretty hard and I don't appreciate it. So I think I want to 
go in for the attack. I'm going to play aggression. On the one hand, I'm going to get the initiative next turn because I have surpassed them. And it's a two-player game. No one else can surpass me any better than that. So with my two of aggression, I get three actions that I can do. And I'm looking at the psionic. Because they have declared empath, I want to get empath, uh, empath, sorry, I want to get psionic tokens because psionic resources and psionic cards will help me towards that goal. So I wouldn't mind taking uh, this location or at least I wouldn't mind controlling it. So I want to move here. Now, normally when you move, you take any amount of ships and you just go a space. But if you have a starport, you can do what's called a catapult move, going as far as you want, dropping off ships on the way if you want to, um, unless you are blocked by enemy ships controlling a system. Uh, so I have moved in. That's one of my actions. And you know what? I'm going to spend this cube uh, during the prelude before I move to build. Because there's a starport here, I can build a ship. So I build a ship, and then I, I take my actions. I move in. Now it's four ships versus their four ships. I could take bigger dice with me. But these red dice, while they do deal damage, they also can hurt me. They have these little fire symbols on them. Or even worse is the intercept ring. And I don't want to roll that, at least right now. So I want to soften them up a little bit first. So I'm going to be rolling with four blue dice at the beginning. And then I have one more action for this. I'm probably going to roll with better dice afterwards. So exactly what I wanted. So this is four hits. And I could take some trophies. But what's much more interesting to me is dealing one damage to each one of their ships. There's a couple reasons I've done this. One, I want to uh, be able to start taxing their, their system. Two, as the upstart, see, every identity has a pro and a con. And their con is they can only tax cities if they control them. They no longer control this location. So I have come in. I have taken out a lot of their ships. And now I'm going to hit them even harder. But I don't want to destroy the city because there's penalties for destroying cities. So I'm gonna come in with two red dice and two blue dice. I would like to destroy a lot of their ships because I'll get a lot of trophies from that. Trophies are important for the Warlord ambition. Um, but I don't necessarily want to destroy the city because that will provoke outrage. So I'm just gonna roll two reds and two blues. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is actually kind of exactly what I wanted. I got four hits, but I also got two little fire symbols. So, as you can see here, this means that I'm gonna deal four damage, so one, two, three, four. That's destroying all of their ships, but I'm gonna take two damage as well. And technically, I take my damage before they take their damage. And I could split this up, so I could completely destroy one ship and leave the other three there. And you know what? I'm going to do that. I've destroyed one of my ships, which means they are going to get it as a trophy. But I've got four trophies, so I'm pretty sure that I can do a little bit... I'm going to do a little bit better than them trophy-wise. Ooh, but there is also the chance that they won't take any trophies. Mm. Oh, it's tricky. This is tricky. You know what? No, I'm not going to give them a trophy. I'm just going to take the two damage, and I'll, I'll try and repair soon. So I've taken four of their trophies. Um, I haven't destroyed their city, but that's uh, that's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, and I'm a little spread out, but I think this is a good position to be in. So at the end of the round, I have surpassed them with a higher card, so I'm going to take the initiative, and then these cards are going to be discarded. So now, as, as the initiative holder, I'm going to play a card. I'm going to lead. And I'm wondering if I want to declare the Warlord Ambition because I'm pretty good on trophies now. So I think that might be a good thing to do. And 
I want to start taxing them. Mm. But this is the where the uh, trick-taking element comes into play. I could play this four of administration. This would give me a tax ability. It's also giving me a repair ability and an influence ability. I want all of these things. I get three actions there. That's decent. Uh, could be nice to have more, but that's okay. And if I play the four, I can declare Warlord because Warlord is number four. I want to declare four. I want to declare Warlord. But if I play the six, I know that my opponent can't surpass me, which means that's more likely that I'm going to hold on to the initiative, which means I'll then get to play the four later. They can't surpass me, but they could seize the initiative. They'd have to burn a card, which is a big cost, but they would take the initiative back. And so that's the question. Do I think, do I want to sort of wait and, and try to get a lot of actions, but potentially lose some of my, um, you know, if it doesn't work, I, I lose kind of a lot of momentum that way. Or I can try to uh, have a much bigger swing and uh, try to, you know, make that work instead. I think I've earned the right to be a little bit cocky. I'm going to play the six of administration. I'm not declaring an ambition. Um, so now I just get two actions, uh, taxing, repairing, or influencing, but I wanna do those things. So I'm going to, first, I'm gonna tax. My opponent has a city on the Sciotic building and I control the system. So I can tax it, which means I get a resource of the type. Um, I really want to keep this psionic thing, and I have these normal spaces for resources. And when you get a resource, you can rearrange the resources on your board. That's important because some of these are more easily stolen than others. And I have a special ancient holdings card, which can hold another resource as well. And it's really hard to steal this. I think this is important to have, so I'm going to place this thing here. But also, when I tax an opponent, I get to take one of their agents as a captive. And that, I think, is a pretty good play. So that was my first action. Now, I can't tax this space again. I can only tax each city once per turn. I could tax uh, my own space, which is going to give me a cube. Um, that's a, a material. That's a good thing to have. Let's you build. Or I can put an influence on one of these court cards. I think I definitely want to do that. I like influencing. Um, I would really like to get a relic planet. There's one right here. I wouldn't mind controlling this whole side of the board. That would be nice, but I can't do that just yet. So with my relics, or with my influence action, I'm gonna place a cube on one of these cards. There's a few things here. Actually, there's a little bit of overlap. So there's silver tongues. This one, uh, during prelude, you can discard it to steal a guild card or resource. That's not bad. Could steal their um, psionic, but also it is itself a psionic uh, card, which counts towards the empath ambition. It's called to arms, which does a similar thing, but this is an immediate use. Actually, no, sorry, this is a different one. Uh, when secured, I draw an action card from the bottom of the action discard pile and then discard it. That's cool, because that's a, really going to give you an extra action, um, but you don't really know what it is. And then there's Mining Interest. This gives you a new action. Whenever you take a build action, you can manufacture instead, gaining you one material. That's pretty good. Or you can discard it to get a bunch of materials. So I like that a lot. I like all of them. I want all of them, but I can't have all of them, so I have to make a choice. I think the call to action is pretty cool, and I would put more out in the future. So I'm putting one of my agents on call to action. But that's my two actions. So it goes over to left brain. And what do I have? Well, I do have an administration card, but it's lower. It's a lower value than the card here. Um, so the question becomes, how do I want to deal with this? Well, if I don't surpass, I have two other options. I can copy playing any card face down, and then I just take one action of the matching type. Or I can play a card of a different suit and take one action of that type. Construction would let me build or repair. Mobilization lets me move or influence. These are all good, but honestly, I 
am worried about them holding on to the influence. So I, I think I'm going to do what they were worried I was, uh, what they were worried I was going to do, and I'm going to seize the initiative. But the question remains: What action do I want to take in the meantime? I know that I want to. Well, I need to rebuild my fleets, so I kind of need to build. I can build a ship here. I could. Oof. The problem is building is kind of slow, but I do have this construction. So maybe I build another starport. That could be a thing that I do. But building and repair, I don't have a whole lot of options here. Oof, oof, there's not, uh, I, I really got kind of hosed in this first round. It's not like I can't make it back from that, but there's definitely some situations that I, I'm, I'm finding myself in that are not ideal. I'm going to be a little cheeky and I'm going to play construction. So I'm pivoting. Um, I'm also going to play a card face down underneath. And this is me seizing the initiative. Doesn't matter what else I've played. This means that I'm going to have the initiative on the next round. I'm also going to have one fewer card and that's going to be painful, but uh, I think this is important. And the pivot action I'm doing is actually I'm going to build in this uh, psionic location. I can't afford to let them just uh, take this space. And because I still have a piece here, I can build in the other uh, location. However, because they control it, my piece comes in damaged. So I built a starport there, but it is damaged. And that's not ideal. However, I can start to... Uh, fix that in the next round. Now, I have taken this, I have seized the initiative. The rest of these cards go away. And now I'm going to play another card. And the question is, what am I gonna play? And I know when I, when I seize the initiative, or sorry, when I declare an ambition, I can just get a free resource. And that wouldn't be too bad. Getting another resource would give me more like building and repairing actions maybe. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, come in with construction. And I might declare ambition, which would be tycoon. This is a two, so I'd be declaring tycoon. Tycoon wants you to have fuel and materials. Now, they currently don't have any of that but they have a city on a material place. But winning Tycoon is tricky to begin with. That being said, this would give me a free resource and getting a free uh, material would help me build more things. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna declare ambition. It's whatever, they're, they're gonna surpass me and take it back. I kind of expected that playing a two, um, but it's okay. I get a material for free because of my upstart ability. Now I have, uh, well one, I'm gonna spend this material to, to build or repair, and I'm going to uh, build, I guess I'll build a starport at my fuel uh, planet. Next, I'm going to uh, have four actions. So I will build a ship in this space, uh, it comes in damage because, again, I don't control it. I'm going to repair it. So that's two actions. And then I'm going to build two more ships, one here and one here. So now I have a bit of a fighting force. If I can be a little bit aggressive in the future, that would be great. Unfortunately, I don't have any aggression cards, which puts me in a weird position. Um, what I don't necessarily know is that it seems like all the aggression cards are in the discard pile because there are a bunch of cards that we didn't play with. Um, that just didn't get drawn out. So I have played construction, passing it over to right. Now I can use construction myself. I can repair some of these ships, which is not a bad idea. And then I'd surpass. I think that's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm playing construction. 
I'm just gonna repair three times. I'm gonna repair, repair, and repair. Oh, but before I do that, I'm gonna spend my relic. So this is prelude action, I have to do it before I take my other actions. Um, so maybe that'll change things, I don't know. I'm gonna spend my relic to secure this court card. Whenever you spend a relic, you can secure a card. So I've secured the call to action card. This draws an action card from the bottom of the action discard pile. And I got an aggression card. Oof. Uh, left brain's in trouble, I think. So I've secured, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did, do, do, do. And because I surpassed with a higher value, I'm going to take the initiative right back. All right, these go in a discard pile. So now I know, oh yeah, I forgot. They, they claimed ambition, they claimed tycoon. So the current things that are scoring are empath and tycoon. I don't, oh, I do have a psionic. We're tied for empath. Uh, so is the NPC, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so I want to be, oh yeah, we got a new card up here. I would like to, I, I want to to win some of these. So I'm going to play Mobilization. Mobilization lets you move or influence. I don't really need to move. Well, I can. Um, you know, it's good to, to spread out, and I like the idea of getting another uh, Relic World. So I'm going to move one ship there, my damaged ship. Then I'm influencing Silver Tongues. Silver Tongues, the ability is you discard it to steal a guild card from your opponent. They don't have any guild cards. I'm getting it because it has a psionic uh, resource on it. Anyway, that's my two actions. And when it goes over to left brain, well, that puts me in a rough position because I can either copy or pivot. I can't, I mean, I could seize the initiative again, but that would get me nothing because I only have two more cards. So maybe I want to make it difficult for them to get Silver Tongues. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to copy. Even though this is the same uh, thing, play face down so that they don't see what I have. And then I copy, I'm gonna influence one. So I'm gonna take my agent and put it on silver tongues. In order to take an agent, you have to have more agents on it than anyone else. So now I've kind of blocked them being able to take it. But that's all I could really do. Um, so these cards, go away initiative stays with right brain and now what i want to do i think let's see i could they only have one card left i have two so i the card i'm playing right now is basically well what i know for a fact is that i can do all of the actions on all of these cards i'm in a very good position right now so what do i want to do with that position well i probably want to declare warlord except that i'm only going to get two points from it because the last ambition tile that's left it's only a two point tile that's not nothing but it does mean i'm gonna send all my trophies back so i might not want to declare that if i think that i could get second place on tycoon no you know what i don't know that i'm going to declare any more ambitions i could gain the points for the trophies but i think it's better to wait until next turn when i can get more points for it so I'm, so with that in mind, I want to win Empath. That's my whole goal. I'm going to administrate. Uh, I will tax, repair, or influence. Uh, I'm going to tax their psionic again. So I get another psionic resource. I also get another one of their agents. Um, and then I can repair or influence I want to influence Silver Tongues again, and might as well put another influence somewhere else. I do like the Mining Interest guy. Oh, the new one that came out, Court Enforcers. Uh, gives you a new ability. You can, instead of taking a battle action, you can abduct. You capture all rival agents from a card in the court that has fewer rival agents than your total weapon icons and resources and cards. That's a little complicated. It's not super helpful for me right now but you can also discard it to place three ships in a system you control. Neat, but I think the other ones are a little more interesting at the moment. So I have put out two influence and I taxed, and I think that's 
it for me. Oh, you know what? Instead of putting out the second influence, I'm going to tax this fuel location. I want to get a fuel. I want to be in the running for the Tycoon Ambition, because I'd like to get two points for that. I'm not going to win it, but getting two points would be nice. Now, luckily, I actually can surpass this, because I just happen to have a higher administration card on my next turn. I will get the influence, but I'm going to have to give it right back because I'm out of cards. However, I get to take three actions here. So, what am I going to do? Well, again, I don't want them to just be able to take the Silver Tongues hard. They do have more Empath than me, or Psionics than me, and I can't do anything about that because I can't tax my place because I don't have the... I, I, I don't control it. That's I didn't think this was going to be a big deal as a really big deal. So, what am I doing instead? I'm going to tax to get some fuel. I'm going to tax to get a material. Because um, I do have these two. And that currently puts me at a higher position uh, for to get second on Tycoon. And then I'm going to influence, once again, influencing Silver Tongues so that they can't get it. I would love to get it in the future. Um, and if in the future I do get it, then I can also get all those, tro those uh, agents as captives. However, I am also putting myself in danger. They're going to have two uninterrupted turns. If they have another way to influence, they can influence. And if they have influence and secure, they can do that. I don't know if they have that. It would be safer probably to go somewhere else. And at this point, they're beating me on empath, so I, I can't really do anything about that. So, you know what? I don't care. They're, let them have it. I'm going to go to mining interests instead. So, at the end of this, I would take the initiative, but I do have to pass it back because I don't have any cards. Right Brain does have cards. And it so happens that I do have exactly what they were afraid of, so that was a, a good play. Though, it also kind of doesn't matter because I can do both of these things. Um, so moving or influencing. I like having a lot of people on the board. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I'll put one on court enforcers as well. No one else can, can do anything about this. So I drop that one, and then I play this aggression. I can secure two cards, and I'm going to secure Silver Tongues and Mining Interests, which gets both of these two as captives. I get my agents back, and I'm going to get both of these cards. Now, I would do it one at a time, and i draw new ones after each, but as it is, I think that's okay um, to say in the interest of time. So, that's the end of the round, or the end of the chapter, I should say. I'm going to move it over here because this will be a little important. That's the end of the chapter. So a few things are going to happen. Uh, first off, I'm going to score. Um, and I need to uh, go from top to bottom, scoring each one that was declared, ignoring all of the ones that weren't. So for Tycoon, the uh, NPC wins that one. They have four of these resources. And then for second place, uh, we're looking at fuel and material. I've got this fuel token, and I've got the mining interest, which has a material on it as well. So that's two for right brain. Left brain also has two, which means they tie for second place, which means neither player gets anything. Empath, though, uh, I definitely win that one because I have two psionics. Actually, I have three. Um, two, they're one, which means I mean, uh, right brain is going to get five points. The NPC and left brain are tied for second, which means they get nothing. And that's uh, the end of that. So we clean up, moving these back uh, to the top, but then we flip the lowest value one, which it moves it from a 2-0 to a 4-2. And so now ambitions are worth a little bit more. So even though that was kind of a rough start for left brain, there's a chance that they can uh, you know, pull it up. I think they, they can manage this. 
if we play smart and counterattack back here. I think that's definitely doable, but it's really going to depend on how the cards play out. So we are advancing the chapter. At the, the game will end either after five chapters or in a two-player game if someone gets to 33 points or higher. And five points, that's, not, uh, that's still pretty far away. So the next thing we need to do is draw out the cards again. There are 20 cards in this deck, and we get six cards each. So there's eight cards that are not seen. But in the beginning of the game, if you do not have the initiative, and this is a two-player game only, after drawing out the cards, if you don't have the initiative, you can mulligan your hand. Discarding your hand and drawing six more from the discard pile. So I'm looking at my hand. What I want is aggression, and I do have two aggression cards. So I am a little bit worried about uh, trying to find something better in here, though there is always the thought of by remembering what I have in my hand and drawing six more cards, I now have more information about what is in the game. I know what my opponent doesn't have. So I know that they don't have any of these cards specifically. I definitely could do that. That's maybe the way to go. Is it worth it though? Because I really do want to make sure I have some aggression. I need to be able to fight back uh, from this current situation, which is bad. So I think I want to keep it. My concern is taking the initiative. I only have one six, but in a two-player game, you can take initiatives with five, and if they, they're probably gonna declare early on, and I do have one of each suit, so I'm, I'm gonna keep my hand. I'm not gonna mulligan. Now, right brain starts us off. We have a lot of mobilization. That's interesting. I have no administration. I have a lot of mobilization, which is good for influencing. I mean, I would try and do Empath again, because I have a lot of Psionic, and it would be difficult for them to catch up, if not impossible, unless they steal something from me. But they could steal something. So starting with mobilization and, and declaring Empath, I don't know if that's uh, a great idea. But what I also know is that because I have the 6543, because I know how trick-taking games work, if I play any of these, he can't play anything higher. Because I have all the higher things. So maybe I declare something else. Now, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take mobilization. And I'm going to declare ambition. I'm going to start by declaring the warlord ambition because I've got so many trophies to begin with. And if he tries to come at me and takes and destroys some of my ships, takes more trophies, that also benefits me. As an elder, if I'm defending in battle, um, when if the opponent takes trophies, I get a free influence. So I, I don't mind this at all. Now, this is giving me three movement or influence actions. I am going to uh, move, I think. Maybe just one ship out. I, I want to start building. Do I have construction? I do have construction, so I could build a few things. Um, this is maybe a little bit reckless, but I'm going to move one space out there. Um, but the other two I'm going to spend on influence. And I'm going to influence... Oh, yeah, what did we get here? So we got unions, the arms union and the construction union. Both of these uh, union cards do kind of the same thing. And they're a way to get cards back. Uh, this is a really useful thing to, to grab, so I think that I want to... Um, if I could get both of them, that would be, I think, really good. So I'm going to spend my other two actions to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, you know go for both of those. And I've declared Warlord. All right, so left brain. Hmm. Uh, I could... Oh... So right brain was so freaking smart. They're like, oh, I can declare an ambition. They won't have anything higher than me. But I forgot that you put a zero there. 
And so left brain here has a two of mobilization. Normally, this can never surpass, uh, in two-player game anyway, but today it can. So I am going to surpass. I get a two of mobilization so I can do some movement, which is great. I'm going to move this one here. I'm actually gonna move into the space. That's one move. Um, this one also has a, has a star port so I can catapult move these as well. I'm gonna do a big counterattack here. But I've got two more, so I'm going to put out uh, two agents. Now I could try to block them, but I think instead I want to, oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna take back this move so that I can put out three agents. I'm gonna put two on the arms union, I'm gonna put one on construction union. I want to block them at least, but I also want to take uh, that arms union card. I really want to take that card. So at the end of it, because I surpassed, I get the initiative. And now, I think I'm going to be aggressive. One, it'll allow me to secure the, an arms union card. Um, so I, I do like that. Now, the three or four, it kind of doesn't matter unless I am declaring an ambition. I, hmm. Declaring, so with the three or four, I could declare tyrant or warlord. I could put a lot of effort into warlord and really just try and take it from my opponent. There's value in that for sure. But it's also tricky because I'm not in a, good position for it right now. I'd have to be really, you know, pretty cocky if I, to think that I can make it work, but I do think I can make it work. And I kind of need to make big plays. So the other option is uh, declaring Tyrant, which they also have four captives to my nun. And I think that that's not insurpassable. And also they're worse at Scoring, at scoring Tyrant. If Tyrant gets declared, they can only get second place for it uh, because of the Elder uh, ability or penalty. Um, so, but, but the point is, I don't think I would get anything from it. I think I need to try really, really hard. Um, so I, oof, but if I declare, you know what? I'm not gonna do it yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the three of aggression. If they're gonna surpass me, they're gonna do it uh, this turn anyway. They'll, they'll play a higher card. I'll sort of find out if they can do that. But I'm gonna get some attacks here. If I don't get surpassed, if I keep the initiative, I'll then play my other aggression card. And by then I should have a lot more trophies. So I get two actions, but first I'm gonna spend my fuel to move. And now I'm gonna move these ships in. Oops. So now I have five ships in this location. My target is here, though, um, or at least my first target is there. Because I've got my Galactic Rifles, I can attack an adjacent system. Five blue dice. That could have gone better. Um, I would really like to destroy their ships, um, but for now, I'm just going to damage them. And... For my second attack, oh, I could attack them again, but instead I wanna make sure I get the card. So I'm gonna take a secure action and secure the arms union. So I've secured the arms union, I get my agents back, I take his agent as a captive. That's starting me off on that path at least. And up we come with a lattice spies. Uh, Prelude, before any of your actions, you may discard this to seize the initiative. Ooh, that's pretty good. And it's a psionic card. So I've got that. Now right brain gets to go. And what are we doing? Well, we do have this five of aggression. So we could do this and take the initiative back. That's not a horrible idea. And then we could do more mobilization. I guess I'll secure the cord enforcers, maybe fight back here. Um, yeah, I at least want to take the initiative back. So I'll play aggression because I'm surpassing. I get two actions. Attacking here is not gonna do much. Attacking here, 
I could take another one of his ships' his trophies and potentially destroy his starport. So yeah, I'm gonna do one attack action and then I'm going to, uh, ooh, or I could move some ships over here and really try and attack these the ships that have come to uh, uh, come to fight me back. And if I wanted to be smart about it, I would spend my fuel, move in, attack twice. Because you, you start by softening them up with the blue dice, and then you come in with the red dice, so they can't really counterattack. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Can I... Do I have another five? I do, so I could go really hard on Warlord. Yeah, okay. I want to win. I'm going to play my fuel to move... I mean, heck, I'll just move all my ships here. Um, I've got three damaged ships, three fresh ships, but even damaged ships uh, contribute dice. So I'll take my first aggression action, rolling six blue dice. Wow. Okay. Well, blue dice are not great, so that's that can happen. Okay, I need trophies. So I'm going to go in the second attack action with three blues and three reds. This has the potential to backfire pretty hard. And it kind of has. Okay, so I dealt four hits, but I got this circle uh, intercept here, which means I'm going to take four hits. That's one hit for each fresh ship the enemy has. That's not ideal, um, but I want to take trophies. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, and then I, I take four hits. I'm doing this out of order. I should be taking the hits, my own hits first. Um, I don't want to give him trophies, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four. He's going to get one trophy from me. All of these ships are now damaged, um, but I am going to take three trophies. And because I, uh, because I surpassed, I'm going to seize the initiative, or take the initiative. Unfortunately, I can't, um, I can't attack again, because I don't have, oh, and I didn't think of numbers right. I thought I had a four, I didn't. So I can't take Warlord again. Well, that's what you call a bummer. Um, I'm going to, I guess, mobilize. I want to put out a lot of influence, I think. Oh, you know what? I kind of want to repair. I have all these ships. I would love to repair them. So I'm going to construct, I guess. And you know what? Even though I don't have a good, like, I don't get a lot of points for uh, Tyrant, I'm going to declare ambition on Tyrant. Because I do have four spies. Um, so I'm going to get three build or repair actions. I think I want to build a city on this relic space, and I'm going to repair two of these ships. I could build another city here, but I think that's that's a better thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So they've done that. I, luckily, have a five of construction, so I'm going to play that. I'm going to take the initiative back. Uh, I'm definitely going to build a ship here. Um, I don't really have anything to repair. I could build another ship in one of these spots, or I could repair my starport. I'm going to build another ship. I'm actually running out of ships, but I will get all of them back when once uh, Warlord gets declared. So I'm going to build a ship there. Now. Now what? Now, now what? Uh, well, I've taken the initiative back. Which means I can once again be aggressive. Though I don't know. Uh, this is this is tricky. I mean, they have seven trophies. I have one. If I destroyed all of those, I wouldn't be able to to get them back. But I gotta do some work on it, I guess. The other option is I go for Empath. I can tax, um, I have Administration. I can tax here and get some more Psionic Tokens. 
With that in mind, and feeling a little bit cocky again, I'm gonna go with aggression. I'm not gonna declare an ambition, even though that would get me a, a token. Um, so I'm going to be attacking here. They have three fresh ships, two not fresh ships, but I kind of want to move in for first. Uh, but first, before I do that, I'm going to spend my material, build my last ship in this space, and use these three to attack, or I move the three ships in and then attack with red dice. Yeah, you know what? I got to be bold now. So I'm going to move all three ships in here. Um, Means I won't be able to tax later, though. You know what? We're talking about being bold. I'm going to spend my empath to get an extra uh, action here. That's The extra action is going to be the movement in. And now I get to take my two actions. So first off, I'm just going to attack them with, with blue dice. I, I can't afford to take hits, so... I'm gonna do as much as I can here. One damage, all right. Now I need to be wild. I'm coming in with a red dice for my second attack. Oh my God, this is awful. These dice can do so much better. Um, so I take, I'm gonna take three damage. I mean, screw it, who cares if you have trophies at this point? I'm not gonna catch up with that. So you can take one, I'll take one damage. I deal three damage. So let's go one, two, three. Two on the fresh ship, one on that. So I'm gonna get a couple trophies. I'll get second place on that, which is not nothing, but it's not great. That could have gone so much better. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, right brain over here. Well, I don't have anything. I only have mobilization. So I could copy. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to copy to secure... Oh, uh, sorry. The one thing that left brain is going to do before this is done is take arms union um, and use this... Uh, so this prelude abilities, I'm going to place this card next to a face-up aggression card. I should have done this before I did any of the attacks. Um, basically, I take this card, I place it here. Once this round is done, I'm going to get this card back. It's going to get me another action in the game, in, in the chapter. So over here, well, that's unfortunate. That means they're going to get another action. I can't take, uh, I can't take the initiative from them. So I'm just going to copy. I'm going to take one of these, put it face down. I'm going to copy. I could fight them back, but what I want to do is influence. I'm going to get the court enforcers, or sorry, secure. So I've secured. I got the court enforcers. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could spend my psionics. He's spent. Bunch of his and empath isn't even on the on the board right now. So if I spent one of these, that would get me maybe a free attack, or give me the free secure. Yeah, I'll spend I'll spend the psionic to get a free secure. So we'll see what else has come up. Elder broker. Um, when is a, a new tax action? You can choose a rival city you control. Swap one resource with that rival. Take a resource of that city type from them and give them a resource they don't have. Interesting. You may, or you can discard this to get a material, fuel, and weapon. It's a really good card. I like it a lot. Um, but for now, I'm going to take two battle actions, I think. And I'm just going to try and... This is just the bloodiest gateway system that ever there was. I'm going to start with these three blue dice. I get a damage. Uh, I'm going to knock out one of their ships. And then I'm going to do one blue, two reds. I have the potential to lose a lot here, but they can't beat me in trophies, so I'm not as worried. Uh, yeah, oof, that's gonna be three damage coming my way, which is gonna destroy all of my ships. This is a bad uh, choice that I made. Um, I deal two damage to them, so I'm just gonna destroy their other two damaged ships. Uh, they lose three of mine. The, the galaxy's looking pretty, uh, pretty sparse these days. And I'm not the better for it, but oof. Uh, this is, I certainly have a lot of trophies at least. Uh, anyway, I, that's the end of the round. Arms Union goes away. These cards get discarded. Left Brain retains the initiative. Oh, the one card doesn't get discarded. I get to keep it. So if I want to, 
I can be aggressive again. At the very least, I can move something here. Um, so I don't know what they have. I, I am a little worried about taking, uh, taking systems. Uh, okay, what, what can I do? Let's say I'm aggressive. I'm not gonna attack, but I am gonna move. I, they didn't, they copied my last one, so I don't think that they're gonna be able to surpass this. I'm just gonna move. I'm gonna move one ship here, and I'm gonna move, uh, oh, I'm gonna move, let's say, one ship back here, because I need to control this system in order to actually tax it. Um, because of the upstart. Normally you can tax your own systems regardless, but in this case I can't. So that's all that I've done. Um, right brain gets to go. They, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pivot because I want to influence. I would like to influence the construction union. I've seen them do the arms union, that was really good. I want the construction union. So I'm pivoting, I get an influence action, uh, and now these cards are gone. Uh, so, coming back to me, I want to do some taxation. Is it possible that I could get tyrant from them? I, let's see. I could tax them once here. I could potentially do that twice. And, I, and if I can get a relic, then I can take two agents from them there. But if they influence me back, uh, this is tricky. I don't know that I want to commit to this just yet. So I'm going to start by doing a normal administration, my six. I'm going to influence on the construction union, and I'm going to tax this uh, relic city. So I get one of their agents as a captive, and I get a relic. Oh, I won't be able to get the construction union, though, if I do it that way. Because I won't have enough agents there. So I have to take a chance. Again, got to make big, big swings. So let's say I did administration instead. I've declared ambition, which is basically just me putting another thing there. Oh, then they can always just copy and put an influence there. So that's not... So there's no way that I can get it. Not that way, anyway. Which means, okay, sorry, folks. Just trying to work things out. You know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta go through all the variables. Um, I'm blocking them. I'm taking captive here. That's the situation as we see it. Right brain. Uh, I can copy. I can do anything. I kind of want to put myself in a better position for the construction union. So putting another agent there isn't bad. Not much else I can do. I can't build anything, which is unfortunate. I could copy and tax to get a material or a relic myself. That's not horrible. Yeah, I think I want to do that. Or I could also get a weapon. Weapons are interesting because they don't give you extra actions, but they do let you battle in future rounds. But I, no, I need building. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to tax, and I'm going to get a material. And when it comes back to uh, left brain, on the next round, they're in a sticky position because I could declare this ambition. And this is where I should have thought through. Okay, if I had been thinking through, I would have put an extra agent on the construction union. Because when I declare an ambition, I can just take a resource of my choice. In which case, I would have been able to capture them. So I could have declared tyrant with this, I would have captured them uh, with the relic that I would have just gotten from declaring the ambition. Um, and then I would have been able to tax and I would have actually been able to win tyrant. And if I declared tyrant, that would have been worth a lot of points. I haven't done that. Sometimes you make mistakes in this game, uh, but I can tax, repair, or influence. I just want to pre like prepare for the next round. 
So I'm gonna tax them again. That doesn't actually help me really. I get another captive, but I'm gonna be giving away captives. So I'm gonna influence, putting another one on construction union. I know I'm gonna start the next turn, so I'll be able to, to take it from them so long as I have a majority. So I'm gonna influence twice and I'm gonna tax, I think I'm gonna tax another relic because I know I'm gonna use it right away. So that's the end of the chapter. Again, white has done very well for themselves, but at least blue is going to get a few points. Um, so for Tyrant, uh, white has four captives to uh, their two, but when scoring Tyrant, I only uh, gain the second place um, score for it. So we both effectively get the second place score, which is going to be two points. It's not like I get second place. You gain the power for second place if you got first. Then we return the captives. Warlord scores. Now I am going to win that because good lord. Um, so that's going to be five more points. But they get second for that. They'll get two. This is a pretty big uh, disparity in points. But uh, left brain is in a much better position at the end of this round than they were at the end of the last round. Especially in terms of the board state. Um, but all, and all of these ships are coming back. So if they can do some good building they might actually be able to pull it off uh, in, a, in a surprising way. But that's all of these. This gets flipped over. Now things are worth quite a bit. And it becomes chapter three. Now, I'm, I think that's giving you a pretty decent sense of the uh, gameplay of arcs. There's definitely a few things that we haven't seen. Um, the raid dice, for example. These orange dice let you steal things from opponents if you get these key symbols you can take things from your opponents based on the key values that those things are in. Each of these port cards has key values. They can all be stolen. Um, the, uh, what, is, what else? Uh, we haven't seen provoking outrage. If you ever destroy a city that provokes outrage, take one of your agents, placing it on the resource value. You don't have the agent anymore. You also can't use those resources anymore um, for their prelude action, but you can still collect them and they'll still be useful for ambitions, but it's a really rough thing to do. So putting out cities is like, is useful. You can usually be sure that most of your cities will survive for the rest of the game. Uh, but yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, this game is, is really deep, I think, strategically and tactically. Um, so if you want to hear my final thoughts on this uh, game, you can click on the link in the top right corner. If you want to uh, teach, watch me teach you how to play this game. You can find a link for that in the description below. But if you want to watch Final Thoughts, I will see you folks there in three, two, one. Bye-bye.